Hi, I'm your host, Marsha Florence with Just Ask. Today we have with us the Michigan Rehabilitation Service. Hurry back and join us. Hi, I'm your host, Marsha Florence for Just Ask. Today we have with us the Michigan Rehabilitation Services, and we have the Eastern Division Director, Sylvia Manifee. Hi, Sylvia. Hi, Marsha. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. I'm so glad you came. Oh, glad to be here. Now, Sylvia, I know that I just gave out the short version of the name, the Michigan Rehabilitation Services, but what is the full name of the agency? Um, the full name of the agency is the Michigan Department of Career Development, Michigan Rehabilitation Services. Okay, now can you give us some history on Michigan Rehabilitative Services? Uh, yes, Michigan Rehabilitation Services is an agency that is federally and state funded and our mission is to provide employment services to people with disabilities. Okay, and your role there as a director? My role as a Eastern Division Director is that I am responsible for seven district offices in the southeast uh, Michigan area. That includes the areas of Flint, uh, Macomb County, Oakland County, and Wayne County, and St. Clair County. And uh, within that area we have offices that are assigned specific geographic territories in which they are to provide rehabilitation services. Now the mission of our agency is to assist persons with disabilities in preparing for employment. Uh, in order to qualify or to be eligible for our program, the individual has to have a disability that creates some type of barrier to employment in the areas of either um, obtaining employment, retaining employment, or preparing for employment. And the person, in order to be eligible, also needs to uh, be in need of rehabilitation services in order to enter into employment. So that is the eligibility requirement. Okay, but how does one come in contact with the agency? What is the awareness factor that lets people know where the agency is, exists? The Michigan Rehabilitation Services, we provide uh, information through a variety of methods. We rely a lot on our rehabilitation counselors. Uh, they are our spokesperson, if you will, the marketers of our agency. And they interface uh, in the communities with uh, agencies like FIA, uh, local mental health uh, facilities. Uh, we are also actively involved with the local schools and um, through those uh, relationships we're able to get the word out that rehabilitation is available to persons with disabilities. Uh, we have also information that uh, is available in the Michigan Works agencies and uh, because we are a significant partner in the Michigan Works agencies, um, we have that information available to job seekers who may have disabilities but cannot be served by the other partners within the Michigan Works agency. Um, they are then referred to Michigan Rehabilitation Services for assistance. Um, we have offices throughout the entire state of Michigan. I represent you know, the lower part or the southeastern part of Michigan, um, but we have offices also in the western uh, division Vision. And that covers um, offices from Lansing to Benton Harbor, Gaylord, Marquette, Mid Michigan, Traverse City, etc. So, throughout the entire state of Michigan, we have approximately um, about 30 uh, office sites. And then, of course, we have counselors who are out in the community on an itinerant basis. Um, bringing rehabilitation uh, to the community. Mm -hmm. So we don't wait for our customers to come to us to access service. We make sure that we're accessible to the customers and so we're always out in the community interfacing with our major community partners so that we can be available to people okay. that need us. That sounds great. Now what about the age criteria? Is there age criteria for a person to be eligible? Um, the person has to be of legal working age, which is uh, age 16 on up. Okay. 
16 and up, okay. Mm -hmm. So when you say 16, that person could or could not be in school, but is in need of some rehab services? Yes, and we work with, um, I mentioned earlier that we're involved with these schools, and we have mm -hmm. um, many uh, what we call partnership agreements in which we uh, collaborate with schools to provide um, transition services that prepare students with special, who are from mm -hmm. special education or students that have a learning disability. Uh, we work very closely with the schools to provide and start working with the kids um, while they're still in school. Uh, we feel that if we begin our, our intervention and we work early with the youth, that when they complete high school or special ed programming, that they'll be better prepared to be productive uh, workers as adults. Okay. Now, we also work with youth who, for a variety of reasons, may not be in school. And um, the adjudicated youth is another population that we're working with. We're receiving referrals from Maxi Training Center. And uh, those are individuals who uh, have made some bad choices in life. And uh, when they have completed um, their um, involvement at Maxi, mm -hmm. they are then referred back to the community and a rehabilitation counselor begins to work with that youth, connecting them with referral, I'm sorry, with resources in the community that can help that youth, one, obtain stable living mm -hmm. uh, situation. We try to provide supports in terms of positive mentors that can help that young, young person kind of stay on the right, right road. And the rehabilitation counselor then begins to help uh, the young person find out what kind of job right. and what type of career or work they want to get involved in. Now speaking, of, I mean, because you have said, but you, you tapped on something there. Speaking of employment, what working relationship do the Michigan Rehabilitation Center have with employers? Is is there any? Michigan Rehabilitation, first of all, we couldn't be in business for well over 70 years if we didn't have a strong relationship with employers. Um, the, the employers are a major uh, partner in what we do. The rehabilitation counselor works with the client or the customer to help identify what their strengths and capacities and interests are so that together we can identify the type of training that individual is going to need so they can be competitive and be productive in the workplace. Mm -hmm. Together, the rehabilitation counselor and the client or the customer identify where the training should be obtained. And a lot of our customers oftentimes um, require just some short-term training, and we can get that through private vocational schools, community colleges, and in some instances, a person may require some technical training. Now, when that training phase is completed, then the rehabilitation counselor and the customer then work together to try to identify employers that will be in the greatest need of that particular skill. So we work with the employers in the sense that we will often do individual placement, meaning that we will contact employers, kind of open the door for the individual, and allow an opportunity or create an opportunity where the employer and the customer can sit down together in an interview setting mm -hmm. and, and get to know one another. And hopefully, uh, the employer is convinced that that individual is the, the best one for the job. Now, our agency, Michigan Rehabilitation Services, is very strongly committed to um, providing uh, service to services to Michigan employers. Okay. We are so committed to the fact that, or to the degree that we have dedicated 16 um, staff people who are called business service representatives. And they are committed 100% toward um, talking with employers, finding out what is it that employers are in need of as it relates to um, acquiring qualified help. But we're also emphasizing to employers the importance of, of trying to retain their current workforce. And so if they have persons um, currently employed who have disability-related problems, that's where the business service representative can, can come in and provide uh, expertise in terms of how to provide uh, suitable accommodations. Mm -hmm. uh, the business service representatives also can work with employers in, in regards to providing uh, disability awareness training to help the employers learn how to work effectively with employees that have disabilities. Okay. And we're very, very proud of the inroads that the business service representatives have been able to make with Michigan employers. 
That sounds wonderful. Now, you, you, you said a lot, but I'm, I'm concerned about the employers, whereas do you find that some employers hire uh, rehab clients based on the fact that they get a tax break, or, or are there tax breaks involved in hiring a person with a disability, more or less? When Michigan Rehabilitation Services um, speak with employers, we are really promoting uh, the benefit of hiring a qualified person. We don't emphasize the disability, we emphasize the ability. And it really, the employer saves money when one, we can save him time in recruitment and in the selection of a qualified individual. You know, there's a lot of money involved in terms of hiring, interviewing, and then training an individual. We convince and show and have demonstrated through time that by partnering with our agency as a provider of qualified employees that the employer can save money because we are a strong supporter in ensuring that uh, the person that they are meeting with that they eventually will hire will be someone that will be a productive member of their, their particular company. Now there are other incentives that can mm -hmm. be attached to that in terms of uh, tax credits and things of that nature, but we really emphasize the value added of a qualified and well-trained individual and okay. that's what we promote most. Okay. Because I often wonder, you know, if you um, seek out an employer and they do hire a person with a disability, say um, a wheelchair recipient. Sometimes I wonder, are they really reluctant to hire because of the level of accommodations? In other words, do they have the ramp prior to actually hiring a person with a, a wheelchair? Because if they have the ramp in place in the first place, it wouldn't be an issue. Then secondary, if the uh, the environment is accessible in itself, the bathrooms, um, the desk area, the cubicle areas, things of that nature. And I find that some employers are intimidated by thinking that it will cost so much money to make uh, accommodating change, when in actuality, the more changes that you make, the more thriving your business it becomes because you have more people coming in to be serviced by you. And I think a lot of restaurant people should consider that. I mean, everybody doesn't take have takeout, and uh, everybody that comes in, are, some are sit-down people, some are wheelchair mm -hmm. recipients who would like to come in mm -hmm. to a restaurant, which used to be probably their favorite restaurant, and now that they're a wheelchair recipient, no longer come in a restaurant. Mm -hmm. Each restaurant establishment, in my opinion, should have access to you know persons with disabilities and variations so that hey you're not just serving serving the public you're serving each and every individual that comes through that door whether they have a special need that's noticeable to you or not mm -hmm. you know and so I think um, we need to get the message out more to uh, all types of services that this is a benefit for all not just uh, a tax break or not just a chance to say I'm doing my best, mm -hmm. you know. And old establishments as well have that have used that as excuse. I've been here a long time. Um, I don't have the kind of monies to upgrade. And I, doesn't the government offer a tax break or something for uh, if you change something if your building is old or something? There, there have been studies that were conducted to deal with that particular perception. And our studies um, found that the average cost for accommodations to an employer was under $500. So it's a perception that I think is, is beginning to, to kind of fall to the wayside because employers now realize, especially with the new building codes, if mm -hmm. it's a new uh, uh, construction, then those ADA uh, accessibility um, standards are, are held to on all of the new constructions and, and businesses and churches and, and uh, other places of, of public activity, their awareness is, is very heightened and I think okay. um, we, we have begun to see a, a conscious if you will, uh, to make sure that um, uh, all public facilities are accessible. Okay. Well, but we, we do like to emphasize that uh, the average cost for accommodations are, is, is very, very minimal. Okay. Keep that in mind, people. Well, Sylvia, we're going to take a commercial break, and we'll be right back. What's wrong, Mrs. Jenkins? Oh. Come on. You can tell me. Well, there's no funding for the new reading program, and I've tried everything. It's just not fair. Where can adults go for ideas when they feel as frustrated as kids? Connectforkids.org. Guidance for grown-ups. 
Okay. Hi, and welcome back to the second half of the show. For those of you who are just now joining us, we're with the Michigan Rehabilitation Services, and we have the Eastern Division Director with us, Sylvia Manifee. Now, Sylvia, we left off with some very good information here, but I did have one specific question. Tell us some of the programs that a client could be eligible for when they actually come into Michigan Rehabilitation Services. As I mentioned uh, earlier, um, in order to be eligible for our program, the person must have a disability. And they must also, as a result of that disability, have difficulties in either obtaining employment, maintaining employment, or preparing for employment. And that in order to become gainfully employed, they require the services of Michigan Rehabilitation Services. Once a person is uh, found to be eligible for our program, they would then meet um, with the rehabilitation counselor and together identify a particular vocational or job goal. Now, the rehabilitation counselor works in partnership with the customer. And the customer is an integral part, in fact, an important part of that individual plan for employment. And that is the plan that outlines specifically what services the individual is going to require in order to be um, ready to enter the workforce. It also, in partnership with the customer, it it spells out the time period, how long will it take for this particular uh, service to be provided, and who would contribute towards the cost of that individual plan for employment. The types of services that an individual might be eligible to receive can vary. Um, you, within our agency, you can look at, you could have a hundred cases, and I would be very sure in saying that you would not find one, two cases that were identical in terms of the types of services that an individual would receive. That is how individualized those plans, the employment plans are. So I'm going to reference some services, but I think it's important to keep in mind that it depends on the individual in terms of whether or not they would receive that service and it also depends on what their needs are. Mm -hmm. But just as an example, some of the services that uh, rehabilitation services uh, is able to provide are um, vocational uh, testing to find out you know what are the strengths and capacities that the individual has. Uh, we provide vocational counseling and guidance to help the individual uh, decide on the uh, appropriate career goal that they would like to enter into. To support training if that is what is required we can uh, assist in covering some of the costs uh, to attend a vocational school or a community college program if books are needed and uh, financial aid and, and the um, customer is not able to uh, provide uh, enough resources to cover the cost, then Michigan Rehabilitation Services can step in and uh, assist with the remaining cost of those training related uh, services. Uh, oftentimes we have uh, persons with, uh, with disabilities who may require what we call physical restoration services. And uh, if they are in need of, let's say, a hearing aid, um, perhaps they can cover a certain portion of the hearing aid and then we can step in and cover the remaining balance. Uh, we can assist with uh, the purchase of wheelchairs, uh, assistive uh, mobility uh, equipment and things of that nature. So I think if, you're, if, if you um, have heard in terms of some of the services we provide, you may have picked up that we look for contributions at whatever level the individual is capable of, of providing. And where the individual uh, falls short in terms of financial participation, that's where Michigan Rehabilitation Services then will try to tap into other comparable services in the community, and then we end up uh, paying whatever is remaining in terms of the cost. What we attempt to do is to pull whatever resources that are available in terms of financial assistance and plug them into the individual plan so that the customer is going to be successful. There won't be any gaps, there won't be any interruptions. Uh, in terms of the individual being able to complete their plan. Sounds great. So whereas a person may not know or recognize the services out there for them, 
Michigan Rehabilitation Services can actually assist them in connecting with that service to complete whatever their endeavors are? Absolutely. It, you know, and so I, I must admit, I'm sure that the, uh, the audience would be a little bit surprised, but I used to be a Michigan Rehabilitation uh, customer myself or client, and uh, I must admit it was a wonderful uh, experience. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, my hearing aids are uh, supported and paid for by Michigan Rehabilitation Services. My education was furthered by Michigan Rehabilitation Services and a graduate from Mercy College, now known as University of uh, Michigan, um, no, I'm sorry, U of D of Mercy. That's right. Sorry, guys. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I, I know that uh, in the time that I was attending Michigan Rehabilitation Services, the awareness of the program was just over my head. You know, I had no idea, and a friend of the family said, you need to go here and see if these people can help you, and, you know, I, I was uncertain about going and everything. And when I did go, the outcome was wonderful. The level of experience and education that I received was overwhelming. And mm -hmm. I wouldn't be the person I am today, Sylvia, without the assistance of Michigan Rehabilitation Center. So I had to say that, ladies and gentlemen, because it's true. Well, thank you <laughs> so. for that nice endorsement. <laughs> thank but you, you, brought up a, you brought up a good point, and that is that one of the important roles that the Rehabilitation Counselor has is the outreach. And um, that's one reason why you know, I was very pleased to be invited here to do this show um, because I think uh, it's very important that um, people with disabilities are aware that there is a program like Michigan Rehabilitation Services that is specifically designed to only provide employment services for persons with disabilities. And if anyone is interested or if they think they may be eligible for our program, I would want to encourage them to, to give us a call. Well, I know you know that magic number, so could you give us that number, please? Yes, that number is 1-800-605-6722. And our TTY number, for those who are deaf or hearing impaired, that number is 1-888-605-6722. And I'd be happy to repeat those again if that's okay. okay fine. The number, toll free number is 1 800 605 6722. And the TTY number is 1 888 605 6722. Okay, now, so we, um, do you have a website address? Because a lot of people nowadays are website users. So, yes. do you have a website address? And yes, we do have a website, and the webpage is www.mrs.state. Dot M -I dot U -S. Okay, because you know a lot of people nowadays want to go on the web and they can actually uh, get some information from the website and see what the services are mm -hmm. that way also? Yes. Okay. In fact, um, on our web page, and I'm, I'm just very proud of it, it's, it's, uh, it's really a very, very beautiful web page. It's full okay. of all kinds of information. But I want to highlight some of the things that uh, a person um, going in on that web page can find. Not only will they find out um, program information, they'll also find out the eligibility criteria. Okay. They'll also find out information about our, our budget, um, how much of our budget is spent in certain service categories, who we serve by disability groups. Uh, we also have a, a link that deals with the services that are provided to our employers in Michigan. And we also have um, a link that um, is geared towards career opportunities within rehabilitation. So it's for anyone that is interested in either finding out how they can um, um, access our program if they're in need of services, but there's also employment information and there is also employer information. Okay. So it's a very exciting web page that uh, we have developed, and it's continuously updated. Okay, wonderful. Now, before we close, Silva, we had the opportunity to attend a conference or a luncheon that you all had not too long ago. Can you give us a little bit about the luncheon, and we're going to close with that special piece right there. So what was the name of the luncheon? And uh, um, The name of the luncheon was Investing in Ability. And uh, throughout the country, October is called National Disability Awareness Month. Okay. And during that month, um, all throughout the country, there are a variety of activities that are ongoing to basically promote the fact that uh, persons with disabilities are an untapped uh, resource for employers. And that if given the opportunity, employers would certainly find that uh, persons with disabilities can be very productive 
uh, uh, employees. And so what we do in Michigan is that uh, in October we call uh, together uh, rehabilitation counselors, uh, people from the rehab community, our customers and employers, and we come together in what, what I like to call a celebration. And it's called investing in ability. And uh, during that employer award ceremony, we um, take time to recognize uh, persons, with persons with disabilities um, who have been successful in their rehabilitation program and who have been able to secure and maintain uh, gainful employment. Okay. Knowing that employers are an important part of what we do, we also take that time to honor and recognize employers um, who have provided uh, opportunities for persons with disabilities. Last uh, October, we had our uh, award ceremony uh, at the uh, Holiday Inn in, in Detroit, and our keynote speaker uh, was Mike Zelle, who is the president of the Michigan Works Agency and executive director of uh, Disability Network okay. in Flint. And then we had Dr. Barbara Bolin, who is our new director for the Michigan Department of Career Development. Um, she uh, welcomed the group and gave a very warm uh, opening speech. And then we also had the director of Michigan Rehabilitation Services, Mr. Robert Davis, do the same. Okay. Um, it was um, a very uh, moving ceremony. Uh, another one of our keynote speakers was uh, Denise Laberty, who uh, was a successful customer from our program and she was able to speak about her experiences uh, going through rehabilitation and, and how as a benefit or as a result of going through our program um, she gained increased self-esteem. Okay. Um, she felt that she was able to um, re-enter the workforce and be uh, a significant contributor uh, to uh, her society and, and in her own community and in the workplace. So it was um, a gathering in which about 150 people had, had come together in, in a real celebration. You were there right. okay. uh, to celebrate um, the relationships that exist between Michigan Rehabilitation, uh, the customer, and the employer. Well, I tell you what, Sylvia, we're going to close with a very special piece, and uh, I want to thank you so much for coming out to see us. Please do join us again at any time. Keep us updated on any changes in the services or upcoming events, and we will encourage our guests and listening and viewing audience to check the website as well as call those numbers and uh, be supportive of uh, Michigan Rehabilitation Services. Thank you, Sylvia. Thank you for having okay. me. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you all know who I am. I'm your host, Marsha Florence, for Just As, and like I said, if you want to contact some of our past guests please call our number area code 248-988-0250 or you can see our address at the end of the show as well as check for addresses and phone numbers of our past guests and if you'd like to see an upcoming show and don't have an idea what you'd like to see drop us a line and let us know but in the meantime as I always say if you know someone with a disability don't be afraid to ask just ask I'm your host Marsha Florence thank you Orders of business, I think, are in order. First, we I think we need to recognize some of the dignitaries that are here today on, on the dais. And beginning with uh, my far left, John Palmer, Director of Employment Service Agency. Uh, Bob Pendleton, and you're the director, assistant director to the department. Deputy director. Deputy director, sorry. Deputy uh, Bob. Deputy Bob, okay. <laughs> Uh, next is Dr. Barbara Boland, the director. Are you Deputy Barb, too? No. <laughs> uh, the director of the Michigan Department of Career Development. Thank you for being here. <laughs> next is Robert E. Davis, who is the state director of uh, the Department of Career Development Rehabilitation Services. Bob? Next, we have Sylvia Menifee, who is the director of the Eastern Division uh, of our department, Michigan Department of Career Development Rehab Services. Sylvia. <laughs> our guest speaker uh, for, from the consumer area is uh, Denise Laverty. Denise. And I'll, I'll say a few words about them later. 
And of course, uh, last but not least is uh, Michael Zelli, uh, the president of Michigan Works, director of the Disability Network. Mike.